Yo, what's up, Serpa Squad? Tanner here, and I'm back with another Terrarium build. This project comes in collaboration with another YouTuber that many of you have wanted to see me work with. It's also much different than others I've made thus far. I'll let him explain the challenge, though. Happy holidays, Tanner, and the entire Serpa Squad. Ants Canada here from the Ants Canada Ant Channel. First off, let me begin by saying I once searched up on YouTube how to grow terrarium moss, and lo and behold, I became an instant fan of your work. You are the best vivarium channel on YouTube, in my opinion. Thank you, Tanner, for agreeing to partake in this terrarium making challenge. So in this holiday season, I figured why not have you construct something that is holiday themed. So, Tanner, my terrarium challenge for you is to create a terrarium or vivarium where the colors red and white are your primary theme colors. You can use plants, driftwood, rocks, whatever natural materials you like, as long as the most dominant colors of your final construct are red and white. <laughs> Good luck, and I can't wait to see what you come up with. You heard the man. In this one, I'll show you how I made a terrarium where red and white are the dominant theme colors. Before getting started, let's go over the materials I'll be using. First up is the container, which is this awesome glass jug. It's a decent size and holds roughly one and a half gallons of water. The challenge of this build is really to stay within the confines of the color scheme. To stay within that boundary, my primary hardscape items are white Caribbean beach pebbles. They don't look like pebbles though because I broke them into pieces to create angular stones. Additionally, I have some white marble chips for small accent elements. White sand also seemed like an obvious choice, along with these red glass pebbles. Let's not forget about activated carbon and my custom substrate mix. It's composed of coca fiber, orchid bark, sphagnum moss, charcoal, and sand. Finding suitable materials was easy enough. Obtaining plants in a short amount of time was more challenging. I didn't use all of these in the build, but my initial selection included Photonia argionia pink angel, Photonia versifelti red vein, Cryptanthus bivitatus ruby, Alternantha Facodia red bitsy, Slaginella umbrosa, Pilea spruciana, Chlorophytum laxum, Alternantha versicolor snowball, Peperomia caparata burgundy, Slaginella crausiana gold tips, and Begonia Rex Red Kiss. I'll explain more about all of those as we work through the build. Now then, let's get started. I made my false bottom using a layer of white sand. Initially, I wanted to use the red glass pebbles and a barrier for this layer, but my vision was to create a stratified look that wouldn't have been possible with those items. After that, I sprayed the sand down with water. I did that to pack the sand down, which would make it easier to keep this paper ring in place. You'll notice that the ring is cut at an angle. This is typically how I design my terrariums. Anyway, the ring was placed into the container and embedded into the sand. You'll notice that the ring is slightly smaller than the diameter of the container and creates a division. Using a PVC tube and a funnel, I directed the glass pebbles to the outside area. This is a great technique that I've shown in previous builds like the Cactus Terrarium. It allows you to selectively place items like sand, gravel, or these glass pebbles. They were used to keep with the red and white theme, but also to hide the charcoal layer. It too was dispensed using a funnel and evened out with a fan brush. Next I filled the remainder of the paper ring with my substrate mix. Initially, I wanted the red area to conceal both the charcoal and substrate layers. However, as I worked through the build, I realized that it just wouldn't be possible. Regardless, the papering served its purpose and was carefully removed from the container. I topped everything off with more substrate, which was evened out. With all of these base layers in place, I could finally add the hardscape. In doing so, I situated all of the large stones first. My vision is to primarily have the scape in the front of the container so that I can fill the back with a dense forest of plants. Keeping this in mind, I only added a few stones, just enough to create this simple layout. After hardscaping, I prepped the plants by removing them from the existing substrate. I 
started by adding one of the Fetonia to the back of the scape. Being one of the larger, upright plants, it was perfect for this spot. The Cryptanthus was then situated on the left side. It's usually difficult to get red plants that are already red, but in time it will be as red as this crypt that's growing in my 180 gallon vivarium. Luckily I was growing this red begonia on one of my propagation bins. It will add that pop of red that this design demands. Then I added the chlorophytum which will act as an accent plant. It also has a nice white edge to it. Another Fetonia was placed in the background to fill in more of the space. The Alternatora and Slaginella were incorporated for additional texture. Unfortunately I lost most of that footage, but you get the idea. Afterward I ended up with my initial layout and planting. From here we'll add all of the embellishments that will really make the design shine. The first step to this process was to add marble chips throughout. These will help add texture and create a better sense of scale. Then I used the PVC funnel contraption to add sand throughout as a top dressing for the substrate. After that I proceeded to add my accent plants, Slaginella. Since most of the plants are red, green is the perfect accent. Plus, this plant sort of resembles the look of a pine tree, so it fits with the festive theme. To complete the setup, I added some springtails. Check out the video linked in the card above if you'd like to learn more about them. Lastly, the setup was thoroughly sprayed down with some dechlorinated water. I used my tweezers and a microfiber cloth to clean the interior of the container. Another microfiber cloth was also used to clean off the outside. Everything was then sealed up with a cork. And here you have the red and white themed Ants Canada Terrarium Challenge. Although a themed terrarium with red and white colors may seem easy, this actually was fairly challenging. For starters, I'm not used to working on projects which deviate from a natural aesthetic. I also struggle to find appropriate materials and plants in such a short amount of time. I know what a lot of you may be saying, there's not enough red. Although that may be partially true at this time, the majority of the plants will turn deep red under bright enough lights. So in my mind, I feel that I was successful at pulling off this challenge. I'm curious what you think though, did I do alright sticking to the criteria of this build? I find it ironic that red is the primary plant color, with green and variegated plants being the accents. Typically it's the other way around. Although unnatural, I think the contrast of red and white elements create an interesting aesthetic. In a way it looks like a snowy scene or perhaps something from a different world. Regardless, I had a lot of fun with this build. I guess that's true for all of them though. My only real complaints are that I wish the larger stones were less yellow and that the plants are redder to begin with for more of an instant gratification. All things considered, I'd say this terrarium turned out well. But wait, there's more. Ants Canada and I agreed to auction off the terrariums we made in this collaboration. 100% of the funds received from the highest bidder will go toward charity. Funds from the build on his channel will go to my charity of choice. Likewise, funds from this terrarium will be donated to Ants Canada's charity of choice, the Apple Drive Project. The Apple Drive Project is a campaign to feed and educate impoverished children about healthy eating habits in the Philippines. It also strives to provide aid and improve their overall quality of life. All in all, it's a great cause, and I'm all for helping people that are less fortunate than ourselves. I'll leave a link to the Apple Drive Project in the video description if you'd like to learn more about it. Due to the nature of the terrarium, it can only be given to someone who's local to my area. I'm going to assume that most of you aren't from around here, so I've set up a few alternatives. If you're located in the lower 48 United States, I'll ship you a terrarium kit. I can give you the items from this build or curate something based on your personal taste. If you're located in the other states or another country, I can ship you something of equal value, buy you a gift card or something of that nature. We can discuss via email should that be the case. In addition to all of that, I'll match your donation up to $100.
So if you're interested in making a donation to charity and possibly winning this terrarium, a terrarium kit, or something of equal value, all you have to do is send me an email. I'll leave all of the details and rules for that down in the video description. I'll only be accepting bids until December 25th, so make sure that you message me before it's too late. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to go over to Ants Canada's channel to see my collaboration with him. If you enjoy Ants and other critters, then I know you'll enjoy his channel. He delivers content in a very engaging and fun way that I feel does a great job at getting people excited about nature. I'll link that up in the pinned comment and in the video description. Anyway, that's about all I have to say. Thanks again Ants Canada for linking up with me to do a collab. I hope that you had a good time and maybe we'll have to do this again. Only next time, I think we need to get some ants. As always, Serpa Squad, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I thank you so much for watching. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to those of you who celebrate. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care and peace.